हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू आइटम गुरु यूट्यूब लर्निंग चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दी वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन सॉफ्टवेयर एसेट एंड लाइसेंस कंप्लाइंस मैनेजमेंट इंडस्ट्री हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दी डिफरेंट सॉफ्टवेयर यूसेज राइट्स दो नीड्स टू बी अंडरस्टैंड and having clarity on all of this pointer is very essential if you are working as a sam professional because most of the people fail to understand the different usage right of software license which we are procuring from software vendor and we f- we are getting fail to achieve the compliance status as we are not having better understanding about the software usage right so it's very important to understand how software usage right works and in today's session i am going to help you all to have better understanding about the different software licensing rules those may help you to make your software license compliance position better and you may help your organization to utilize your software license with better way by following the guidelines laws terms and condition those are set by the publisher as we all know different publisher is having different licensing rules different licensing matrix different licensing contracts and agreements and they are having their own usage right but in today's session we are going to discuss few generic software usage rights those are very essential to understand each and every one of us as a sam licensing expert so i would like to welcome you all once again to this session and without wasting time we are going to have a detailed discussion about the software usage right so when it comes to the software usage right we all are worried about how can we are going to use this specific software which we have purchased from specific vendor and the first right which we are going to discuss here is software upgrade right so upgrading is talking about change in version and that change is going to in the upward direction means whenever we are moving from old version to latest version it is a change in version we are changing our version from old version to latest version and the change is getting captured as a software upgrade rights and as per the software license compliance or software assurance maintenance and support policy it's really mandatory to have active software maintenance and assurance in order to get the benefit of software upgrade right if we take an one of the popular example which may be easy for each and every one to understand if you are using windows 7 or windows 10 or maybe any version of windows which is old one and you want to move to the latest version of windows so if you are using windows 7 and if you want to move to the windows 10 it is indicating that you are upgrading your version of software you may get some additional functions features those are enhanced by the software publisher and in order to take that benefit ideally publisher used to launch the different version or the latest upgrades of that specific product and it may include your security patches it will be also having the different functionalities which may help client or customer to use that product effectively and they will get some benefit to their business so that's why software upgrade right is very essential and we will we all have to keep in mind in order to upgrade this software version we will have to think about the software assurance or software maintenance if you don't have active maintenance or support you are not eligible to upgrade this software this is very important key catch we all have to keep in mind so that's the important 
part while doing the upgrade so if you don't have active maintenance and support you are not eligible to upgrade your product then the next important right is going to be the software downgrade right so software downgrading it is talking about moving down from a latest version to old version the point is that why people used to go down or why they are preferring to go to the older version because they might feel familiar or they might feel that the previous version of that specific software was bit easy to use they might be familiar or user friendly uh, interface so based on the functions features and and the user acceptance the end user will take this call and uh, they can decide to downgrade their version they might go n minus 1 or n minus 2 depend on the version and the policy which has set by the publisher so we can do that downgrade and in order to do the downgrade we will have to uninstall the latest version whatever you are using and you can move down from n minus 1 or n minus 2 based on the rule or the term set by the publisher so if you take an example you might be using windows 10 and because of some reason you want to move down to the windows 8 or windows 7 so when windows 8 or 10 got launch we have seen that lot of people like found some challenges to use windows 8 or 10 because they were not much familiar about the latest version their interface their gui and their usability and that's why most of the people decided to move back to the windows 7 as they have used it for longer time the interface is very user friendly and they know what are the functions are available in windows 7 and they can use it easily but time being people has upgraded themselves and they keep using the windows 10 and windows 10 as are, these are the latest version and we have we are getting a better functions and features we got a better user gui and then people again move back to the windows 10 so yes it is possible to downgrade as well as upgrade your software version and these are the two important rights which we have uh, to keep in mind so next to that we will be talking about software cross edition right so no, name itself is talking about edition so as we all know different publisher as having their own editions we know there are multiple editions of software available in market so in short if i want to talk about edition in our generic uh, word i would say it's kind of same product with different flavor with different price with different taste and edition is helping all the audience of the market or the all level of customer can use the same product at different cost with different function based on our requirement as we all know the there are a uh, popular editions like basic edition standard edition professional ed- edition and we have the enterprise edition these are the most popular and common editions which is getting uh, followed or used by the most of the publishers so the basic edition might be having a less price and limited functions and uh, we have standard edition which is having more functions as compared to basic but price will be bit high if you talk about professional it is again it might be bit costly but you will get some additional functions and features again if you are buying same product on enterprise it is kind of um, uh, one of the popular edition which is getting used in almost uh, all of the organization if you talk about large size organization so they will be using enterprise edition with a high functionalities and price is also high but you will be expecting the better business outcome and that will help you to enhance your product quality and user experience also so depend on your need you can take this call which edition you want to go and uh, one more important thing is that we are holding cross edition right so cross edition right is talking about moving from one edition to the another edition it means that if you are using a professional edition and if you want to go to the enterprise or you might be using a, a, a standard edition if you want to go to the professional 
so that would be possible by paying some additional cost and you can move from one edition to the another edition and that is your cross edition right so edition can be upgraded and edition can be downgraded we have to follow the rule or the term and condition set by the publisher so depend on your need you can cross grade your edition and you can downgrade also your edition so whatever the edition you prefer and which suits to you or your business depend on your level of business you can take this call so cross edition is simply talking about moving from one edition to the another edition let's move on and discuss the another right so we have the cross platform also so till now we discuss about the software upgrade right software downgrade right software cross edition right and now we have software cross platform right so platform the name itself indicating that we are going to discuss something about operating system so operating operating system is going to be the platform as we know there are multiple platforms available in the market windows is one of the popular platform uh, which is owned by microsoft then we have the mac and that is owned by the apple then we have the linux which is owned by the red hat we have n number of different platforms and whenever we are moving from one platform to another platform with the usage of application so in that situation we have to change the operating system or the platform so whenever we are switching from one operating system system to the another operating system for the software usage that fundamental is called as cross platform right and most of the publisher are granting that right to use that application on different platform so it's important to check the software rights which your product is hold we have to go through the different contracts or agreement which you and your organization has signed with different publisher and without checking the terms and condition we cannot apply this rule we cannot do the cross edition we cannot do the cross platform or downgrade and upgrade so it's very important to understand the rules terms and condition those are set by the publisher so let's move on and discuss the another usage right as we have the multi user and multi install right it means that we can do the multiple installation uh, which can be getting used by the multiple users or we, you might be holding the right of uh, multi user where we can install one application for the uh, for the multiple users uh, that is kind of the concurrent user or we can say the floating user or the the user those are randomly using or accessing your program so you have to look for the right which is uh, hold by your organization while purchasing the product so how many copies we can install if we are buying a uh, software for the user we have to understand on how many machines we can install that product so some publisher might you offer to install it only on one machine some publisher may allow you to use it on two or three machines it is talking about a multiple installation but that is the limited n plus 1 n plus 2 or n plus 3 these are this is the standard criteria which is getting followed by most of the publisher so you, you have to check that if your product is holding a multi install right or multi user right so you have to understand on how many machines you can install it or maybe the how many users can use that instance even it is for the uh, installation so next to that we have the uh, use to write the product by the external user or the third party user those are not part of your organization because we are buying license for the users those might be belongs to your entity they are directly connected to your organization but there might be some users those are those are not belongs to your organization they might be using your product temporarily uh, based on the business requirement we can call them out as a third party users uh, or the external users if they want to use the any software program uh, maybe with the help of rds cal or maybe they might be using any vpn connectivity uh, but in that situation we have to make sure that we are granting them right to use that product or we are checking the authority which has been granted by the publisher uh, for the external users or the third party users those are uh, going to contribute to your organization or contribute to your solution and those are helping you to enhance your solution 
so third party right or external uh, user right needs to be validated and confirm if any external user or the third party user is trying to access your program and the final one is the global usage right as we all know uh, most of the publisher are designing some solution uh, for specific countries if you are buying any product uh, for the specific country it is indicating that you are not allowed to use it outside country you are not holding authority to use that same product or same license in another country as we have restrictions for the specific country so we have to understand the global usage right of product if that product is restricted for specific country or it is going to be allowed to use in specific country uh, or uh, that product is having global usage right if any product is having global usage right it is indicating that you can use that product worldwide in any country at any geography and, and at any location there is no restrictions so global right needs to be understood as it is helping you to understand uh, where can where we can uh, use that product and all of these rights are very important in order to maintain manage and regulate the compliance by following different policies those are set by different publishers and we have to make sure that we are complying we are following all of these rules because even audit comes it should not be like version like there should not be any version violation if we talk about the perpetual and non perpetual i have seen that most of the customer fail to maintain the specific version which they have uh, for which they have uh, purchased the maintenance or they should be uh, restricted their usage for a particular version even they have not done the continuous renewal but they feel that they have perpetual license and they can use any version but that is not true we can use the software even though your product is perpetual we we can use the specific version of the software which was released at the time you have the active maintenance you cannot go beyond that and uh, i have seen that multiple cases where organizations has done the version violation it means that they are using a software version for which they are not authorized because they don't have the active maintenance and support and they have done the upgrade and using the latest version and they got penalized for that even the country specific use or the global use rights people are not aware about that if the if this uh, purchase license is restricted to specific country or uh, it is having global right uh, that might be not allowed to use in specific country but without having understanding that they have breached that uh, licensing term and they use it in different country so that is also one of the global usage right is also one of the important part which uh, which we all have to keep in mind and uh, it will help you to save in uh, audit so this is very important uh, to keep all of this stuff in mind so guys i think uh, these are the most important rules which we have kept here in mind i hope uh, you people got better visibility on this part and it will help you all to uh, boost up your sam knowledge and uh, to enhance your software license and compliance understanding and definitely you will utilize uh, all of these rights in your current organization to give the better experience to our customer so thank you so much guys for watching the whole training series i have uh, uh, i have uploaded multiple uh, topics i have shared multiple topics and the my view on uh, different uh, different uh, topic of software asset and license management part and uh, don't forget to watch it and uh, do subscribe to my channel we'll see you in next week thank you so much for your time bye bye